Hey, what's going on, everybody? Coming in hot. Two out yes. of four. <laughs> hey, um, two out of four, that's still a 500 average, right? That's it. <laughs> still batting 500. Exactly, exactly. And and we could, um, actually, I, I saw someone peeking out to the left there. <laughs> we'll keep him in the wing. We're actually probably batting 750, uh, but but uh, that's, that's for later. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, hey, thank you so much. Uh, this is my my new uh, green screen. Actually, no, it's not my green screen. It's actually, I'm in my mountain hideaway uh, there it is. for this edition. Uh, I'm very, very out of ele my element oh, because I don't have my soundboard. I don't have my regular microphone. Uh, but hey, uh, Cowboy Jack, uh, you're you're on location as well, right? I'm, on the, I'm in an away game, brother. I'm in an away game tonight. I'm in lovely Galesburg, Illinois. Wow! Yeah, I'm out here staying so, with staying with some family, taking in some some sights, and it's just been <laughs> such a great tour, man. Right on! So you're in the future. You're two hours ahead of me, right? Two hours ahead, <laughs> correct. Eight thirty-one. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, how's the weather there? It's beautiful. So the last two days have been maybe mid to high seventies during the day. The night is beautiful. Today it was a little bit rainy, so we did some inside axe throwing activities. And cool. but I love the cold and I love the rain. And oh, I, I've been sleeping like a baby, feeling good, man. This is there's something special about the Midwest that I'm learning. Well, um, it, like the great Eddie Rabbit said, uh, I love a rainy night. There it uh, is. Such a beautiful sight. Yes. <laughs> Eddie Rabbit. Eddie Rabbit. Hey, Ian, thank you for joining us. Do you know who Eddie Rabbit is? And it's not Rabbit Moranville, uh, the Hall of Famer. Um, uh, if you know who Eddie Rabbit is, please put it in the chat. Uh, yeah. Challenging you right here. Um, hey, let's start out the show. Um, let's, the show must go on, right? Yes. Welcome From to another Tuesday. Welcome to another Tuesday night. This is the weekly Baseball Brew Crew podcast. We are a little bit country. We are a little bit lock and roll, keeping baseball history alive one craft beer at a time. Wherever you are watching us live today, uh, please give us a like and a follow. And if you love your beer, uh, love beer with your baseball, uh, please tell a friend. Some housekeeping before we start. We wanted to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters for their incredible support. These are the people who hopped on and believed in our craft beer and baseball experience. We are lucky to have them along for the ride. Here they are. Uh, if you would like to become a Patreon supporter, go to patreon.com forward slash beer baseball. You can become a Patreon member for as low as $5 a month. Uh, Again, we appreciate all the support, and uh, we do this weekly, so this is a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, uh, we, we super appreciate it. Here is the lineup card for today. It is uh, a lot of people scratched <laughs> in our lineup. Uh, Angelo Trinidad is our VP of Content Development. He is on assignment. Uh, hopefully, he'll be back next week. Uh, Strike our, one. Yes, strike one. Our strike two is our field correspondent and senior research analyst is somewhere out there in the uh, the Orange County freeway system. Uh, he will be here shortly or at the same height. Um, but hitting third is the Goodwill Ambassador and the Sultan of Swig here at the Baseball Brew Crew. It is Cowboy Jack Durango. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to you live from Galesburg, Illinois, on loan from the Chicago Cubs. Tonight, we're joined by a special guest, Mr. Harry Carey. Oh, my goodness. Hey, cow. This is Harry Carey coming to you live here at the podcast of Cowboy Jack Durango. Let me tell you something, Jared. If you were a hot dog, would you eat yourself? I know I would. <laughs> oh, one, oh, two, oh, three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I ever get back for a root, root, root for the Cubbies, if they don't win, it's a shame. 
Fourth one, two, three strikes are out at the old ball game. Let's get some run. Uh, Harry Carey, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Harry Carey. Let's get some runs. I love you, Sundance. <laughs> uh, yes, the look on Joe. Yes. Yes, Ed, thank you so much for joining tonight. Take me. Oh, my goodness. Cowboy oh. Jack Durango just bringing the heat every week, baby. I got <laughs> Harry Carey on the show. Wow. Cubs win. Cubs win. Actually, they didn't win uh, this year. They were out of it uh, pretty early. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, do we – Do we? Uh, do we name that that mystery man, or uh, was that was that the ghost <laughs> of Harry Carey? <laughs> that, that that mystery man is my lovely, lovely cousin Michael Hanlon. He is my son is named after him. He's he's more of a brother than me to a cousin. He just one of the most special people in my life, and I'm out here spending this week with him. And the Harry Carey that he does is spot on, and it gets me every time. So I had to bring that joy to the baseball brew crew. Oh, that is awesome. Yes, what a treat from behind the grave. <laughs> Those, dude, the glasses are perfect. Yes. Oh, so good. I mean, it's, it's uh yes, that was it, yeah, that was, yes. I'm sorry. I I uh, uh I did not kayfabe it. I I, I apologize for that. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I shout so out well. shout out to Michael Hanlon. He is the yeah. Sundance to my butch, Cassidy. Yes, yes, he is. Steve was fooled uh, for sure. That's that's amazing. Uh, hey, David, definitely, uh, yes, uh, bring it. Definitely brought the heat for sure. Um, so uh, let's, as tradition uh, on the show, we bring a new and unique craft beer to review and enjoy. Um, and so, what are you drinking tonight? I'll. I was actually. Uh, I was actually going to start with uh, Kevin's, but he is not here. Uh, so I, I would definitely want to hear about this one. Omni Gang is actually uh, from the Cooperstown area. So I uh, definitely want to hear about this and a, a topical uh, October beer. So I definitely wanted to hear more about this one. But uh, Jack, tell me about this one. This one looks amazing. So dude, the double, the Dead Man's Double IPA is brewed right here in historic Galesburg, Illinois, Home of baseball legends Eddie Leahy, Joe Steck, and Patrick Hanlon. Iron Spike is a local lovely brewery. They brew this Dead Man's Double IPA. It's an 8% 93 IBU. This is, they call it a, a hop bomb. Um, it's a very hoppy beer. It, they say if you love um, stiff American hops, this one's for you. And this is the type of beer here at the uh, in the crew that we call a nine night beer. This mm. one is gonna this one's gonna be the last one you want to open at the end. You, the, don't start out with the dead man's double. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Ian says uh, that logo is sick. I, I agree. I I was like, oh my god, it's this is super cool. I definitely want uh, one of these. Uh, it's a dead man party. Who could ask for more? Uh, and, and, you know, they gave you more. Double. Double IPA. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, that's so amazing. Um, definitely uh, interested in this one. And uh, and I, I I didn't get to see a lot of the other. Actually, the, the all of their um, beer has like, that, this really cool artwork as well. I just yeah. I just happened to glance at it uh, really quickly no, it, while it, I was getting that. Yeah, it's all, you know... I, you know, railroad themed and their, their art is just so super cool. And uh, you know what, if you're ever in Galesburg, grab a tenderloin, a dead man's double and go check out a uh, silver streaks game. It's, it's God's country. And this is God's <laughs> beer. Steve uh, wants to know uh, the ABV on it. Did, did, did it say eight, eight percenter? Eight percent. So yeah. not, not too high, but not uh, too high. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you, Brian, for joining. Uh, I, I, I take it he's uh, one of Ian's uh, fans or or uh, relatives, or it could be uh, his brother for all I know. <laughs> but thank you, thank you for joining. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree. It's, it's. I mean, this that's super cool. Um, I, I, it reminds me of actually of of my um, my Eddie Murray uh, 
beer. It looks it looks almost exactly like that. So because um, I, I think it has this, like the same colors, uh, the orange and the black and everything is super, super cool. Um, OK, so uh, my beer for tonight looks familiar because it is ah. actually um, because I'm in Anaheim uh, uh, right now. I'm actually uh, uh, I'm here on assignment. I'll just say that. Uh, and I'm actually going to give uh, half of my 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 beer booty, as it were, uh, to uh, to Kevin. Uh, when, oh, when Lord. He doesn't yeah. need any more, does he? Yeah, he, no, he doesn't. He doesn't need it. But but hey, it's it's a it's an Angels uh, uh, beer uh, and he's he's an ex uh, Angels fan. Uh, so <laughs> I thought I thought this is a good way to to close out his fandom. No, he, he's he's still there. Uh, well, let, beer, let, let's ask, uh, let's ask he's, the man. He's an ex oh, jeez. I'm fan. so <laughs> <laughs> Go away. Go away. <laughs> all right so uh that was kevin uh he'll what a diva loves to make an entrance <laughs> what an oh entrance. i'm here <laughs> wow gosh yeah. kevin oh, yes kevin, sir take, take a deep breath you're among friends we're going to talk some beer and baseball what do you what speaking do you of the the death of my franchise did you see what went down in the courthouse today let me really start off hot yes big news yeah. Big news. That was pretty yeah, bad. tell us about that. So it came down today that whoever was the guy who supplied Tyler Skaggs with the uh, – was it – I don't know what – I'm trying to remember what he took that the bad mix that uh, unfortunately killed him was. Fent but fentanyl. It was fentanyl. Did he get rainbow fentanyl for Halloween? I mean, I mean that's <laughs> easy to tell right now. See, just, fentanyl isn't the Democrats' fault. <laughs> wow. The Democrats' fault he got that fentanyl. I'm sorry. Why am I getting all political? Jeez <laughs> Louise. Speaking <laughs> of Halloween. Uh, yeah. That's right. That's why I got this beer. Is <laughs> It's not quite as strong as Jack's, but uh, I do love this logo, uh, so I, I, if you, I don't know if you, on the side here, there's a grade that says unfilled glass, empty kegs, and there's the arm coming out and it, it says right there, uh, grains. grains. Oh, nice. Nice. So screamy. We got like expired beer grave, R, an RIP in there. So this is a 7.6 Imperial chocolate peanut butter stout. It's the Halloween season. And I got my, my skull, my skull little glass here I got from Radiant. So you know what? Cheers, everybody. Fill her up. Fill her up. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, please fill her up so you can calm down, right? <laughs> <laughs> Steve says you look hazy, so uh, maybe you can do the hazy history. We, we'll actually make oh, the, the screen look hazy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, apparently, I can't make hazy history. Jack can't make hazy history. Oh, you know, two straight our... weeks. We haven't done it. <laughs> uh, K fade, right? Yeah. Jeez. It's every now, now my now my skull is looking nice and nice and dark there. Nice, nice. Well, I mean, Kevin, I, ha I have uh, three of these for you. Um, right. And uh, Steve says uh, the brewery X is very solid, uh, even if they're in that Anaheim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are. In it. They're in the north part of Anaheim. But uh, who knows what's going to happen now? Because uh, they were trying to buy Modern Times and word just got out last night that Modern Times Anaheim location is shutting down literally the end of this uh, week. Sucks. And it's literally right. It's probably about a mile and a half or so from me. And I've been there a couple of times, but. The nice little restaurant with a pool and beer and a nice cafe in this old house. It was really cool. I, I think I was at the cafe getting coffee in the morning more than I was hanging out at the uh, yeah. at the brewery. It's just the way the schedule worked out. Yeah. But to read this real quick, might as well just get to this. It's a sweet and spooky, like the perfect Halloween night. All Hollows treat rekindles your favorite childhood holiday memories. Aromas of flavors of dark chocolate, creamy peanut butter, and a soft vanilla finished swirl with a smooth body and medium mouthfeel. I should have read this in a Vincent Price voice. <laughs> it's the perfect throwback that brings you to your first bite of a chocolate peanut butter cup. Chocolate <laughs> peanut butter. Yum. Oh, it's awesome. You know, Kevin, yeah, yes, sir. Kevin, Kevin's a worker, man. He shows up, he walks in late. Yeah unprepared yeah. and then completely steals the show no yeah, exactly. I got, well you know you talked about a treat from beyond the grave i thought he was talking about me earlier because that definitely <laughs> is me to say the least i don't have my light on yet there we go now i look now I'm looking there you go that that's the that's the hollywood uh kevin lyon we all know and love <laughs> oh, hollywood yeah very, very hollywood tonight. we're live now exactly. oh yeah the silent screen there you go <laughs> 
<laughs> you would want so, me silent probably right now. <laughs> well, oh, hey, always. Let, let, oh, always. Let, yes. Let's let's talk about this. Um, there was. Oh yeah. Uh, there we go. The Great American uh, Beer Festival. There's some medal winners, and there's a lot of uh, California uh, brewing here that uh, looks very familiar, Kevin. And this is just LAOC Adventura. I don't have the uh, the San Diego area because oh, yeah. Hop is um, a group called Hop LA that you can find online, and they do a bunch of, a bunch of reviews and just give you info on brewers in and around LA, Orange County, and obviously Ventura County. But uh, let me let, I mean, if you go through this list. There's Radiant right there that's down the street from me. Um, what have we had on the show before? Island, Island Park, Park. on the show. Ogo um, Pogo, uh, Rip Beer, Rip uh, Topa, the, Topa Topa. Yeah, Topa Topa had that really good baseball beer. I was trying to see what they won. Yeah, right Arrow Lodge happened. Brewing and uh, Cowboy Jack. Um, one that I think that we're going to have to uh, find out where it is, Bearded Tang Brewing. Yes. That is that actually a brewery. Oh that God. actually is not that far. It's, it's uh, in a town called Stanton. Town. It's actually not that far. It's right by Garden Grove, actually. No kidding. Yeah. I, of course, I read Bearded Tang. I'm in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. I'm exactly. headed to Bearded Tang. I'll meet so you. I, there. Yeah. Someone was telling me, like, this place is pretty good. It's in, like, a little, like, I guess, lack of a word, strip mall where you go in and there's several restaurants in there and they have a spot at this place. And wow, they won two awards. I didn't even have their beer before. Yeah. That's well uh, done. Beach. Beachwood Brewing, uh, Bottle Logic, The Brewery, uh, and uh, know, Figueroa Mountain, which I've heard a lot about, but I have not. Uh, I don't. I've think had I've a couple had of their beers, and they're really okay. good. They're like the uh, Santa Barbara area. Yeah, and and Brewery X is in there too. There you go. So, um, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I mean, again, we're spoiled. I, I guess that uh, there's a lot of California representation uh, at this festival, which it, which every year is a uh, a very very well attended. Uh, it's got to be the beer biggest. Festival. It's in Denver. Denver, yeah. And there was like hundreds of breweries there, apparently. Yep. Which is just nuts. Yeah. So um, definitely one. To... We might have to go on location for that sometime. <laughs> I, I'm literally scared to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I just want, I've just seen photos going, well, who would you pick to, how would you get, how many samples could you get through? You know what I mean? I, I, I mean, there's, there's literally hundreds of breweries. So it's like, so it's, you have thousands of beers. Yeah, oh, Jack's like, oh, I'm Jack's like that's to, Wednesday. I'm either going to the hospital or jail, but we're doing this. <laughs> How about oh, both? both? No, why not yeah. both? Why both not? and multiple times. Yes. <laughs> Jack's yeah, here so again. Yeah, I don't even know how I how how do you pace yourself at something like this? Because I, I I would want to try everything. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't it's, know. You'd have this to go why I would feel plan. bad. I would probably not go to most of my local breweries. I'm like, I can get when I get home. Right. Uh, I, I I, but you want to support them. Exactly. I know. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah, definitely, yeah, a, it's yeah, definitely yeah. a dilemma. Okay, so... Uh, it, yeah. While you're yes. doing that, I think, uh, for those of you who were at Radiant, I believe that beer is so into you. I think one of us had that on the show. I don't, I, uh, what, I believe we so into you. I think one of us might have had that on our. Oh, I, th you know what? I think I think I, I'm almost positive. I know that. I had that. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think I, I did too. I thought you had perpetual energy myself, but that's all right. I I had uh, I had that was my warm up. That was my pregame. Okay. All right. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Jack has lots so pregames. Yeah. So there was for yeah. for sure. And um, post game. <laughs> and that's what we call extra innings folks yes exactly exactly it went 18 innings that that night oh, <laughs> all right so let's do it this is this day in baseball history for october 11th october baseball october 11th 1972 50 years ago in the fifth and deciding game of the National League Championship Series at Riverfront Stadium, George Foster scores the winning run from third base in the bottom of the ninth from a wild pitch thrown uh, by Bob Moose, uh, giving the Reds a dramatic 4-3 to walkoff victory against the Pirates. Uh, earlier in the inning, a friend of the show, Johnny Bench, uh, hit a home run off Dave Gisty uh, to tie the score, and you know, the, the, the pitcher Bob Moose uh, got me thinking. I'm like, oh, I wonder if he's any – no, nah, because it, 
how can it be any relation? Because it, it, Bob Moose being his last name, but to Moose Haas, okay, uh, who's a, a player who was in the late 70s. Mm. Um, and then I looked up the, the, the picture. I'm not, I'm oh, not wait. positive. <laughs> wait a oh, minute, bro. But I think it's just like, hello, I am now Moose Haas. Yeah. <laughs> Very the, mid, the, the Midnight Rider Moose Haas, am I right? <laughs> exactly. The midnight Rider Moose Haas. <laughs> Everything yeah. about this is the same person. Like, look at the, the finger out the, out the mitt, the oh. same pose, the same like <laughs> eyebrows, <laughs> everything about it. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm losing well done, my mind. Sir. Well done. <laughs> you're 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 a beautiful genius. A beautiful <laughs> genius. Thank you for that. And, oh. and Ian mentions it. Get your beers ready because we do have a brewer. That's, um, that's right. You know, that's awesome. that's right. Well, it, you know, Jack, I always do the research. Hashtag, Hashtag do the research. You got to. You know what? We're professionals. You got yes. to. We're professionals like, just for you. Not me, apparently. Uh, just for you. Uh, October 11th, uh, 1972, also 50 years ago today, Bobby Winkles becomes the first major league manager taken from the collegiate ranks since Hugo Benzek, who managed the Pirates in 1917. Now, um, Jack, um, what what college did uh, Bobby Winkles, uh, what, who, did, who did he coach for? Bobby Winkles, you know, if memory serves, and I could be wrong, Arizona State University. Arizona State University, the new Angels manager who compiled a 524 and 173 record wow. en route to three national championships with Arizona State, uh, replaces the recently fired Del Rice, who was spent one season in fifth place uh, for the Halos. Um, yeah, he won championships in 65. 67 and 69. See, he might have um, had Reggie then. It might have had Reggie. Yes, in yes. Yeah. I think I think the I think that was like the Salbando years, uh, mm -hmm. right before the the when he went to Oakland, and uh, yeah. So there was a lot of uh, yeah, and and I mean Bobby Winkles is like. Um, like he stopped, he was 51 to 71. I mean, 59 to 71. Mm -hmm. um, but I, he's a, he's an Arizona State legend. Like I remember he, going to that Packard Stadium at that time. Uh, there was Bobby Winkle stuff uh, everywhere. Like he was a legend for Arizona State. Yeah. Can you go back to that slide? Because I have to say something. That, this this slide. Yeah, because I was looking going, what are you talking about? Like the Angels ever play in October? <laughs> yes. Well, wow. and this and this is in '73. Uh, this is Nolan Ryan's right. no hitter. So, so like, wait a minute. There, there's no way this is the Angels. Yeah, they can't be making the playoffs. Wow. Get out of here, playoffs. <laughs> wow. Well, I, they have like a 14 year old kid playing catcher. Yeah. <laughs> All yes. the minor leagues, dude. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yes. the joke. That's that's the winner right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff, Ian. Good stuff. All right. So October 11th, 1976, with Davey Johnson on the on-deck circle, Japanese slugger Sadaharo O oh hits his 715th home run, surpassing Babe Ruth's much-heralded career home run total. Um, and uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, Davey Johnson, who uh, uh, eventually uh, became uh, a manager uh, for uh, the Mets, and the Nationals, I believe. Um, and that's pretty cool, right? So arguably, um, one of the best views of baseball history. Well, get this. Two seasons before that. Oh, my gosh. On October, uh, April 8th, 1974, <laughs> Johnson was uh, also in the lineup, two hitters behind Hank Aaron oh, when wow. he passed Babe Ruth for his 715th home run to become the all-time home run leader. Is that Daryl Evans on to the uh, next to him? That is. That is Daryl Evans. And this is the year that Davey Johnson actually had more homers than Hank Aaron. This was uh, se this was 73. And meanwhile, a couple of years later, he's he's in Tokyo playing, you know, playing for the Giants. Yeah, exactly. That uh, fall from grace. <laughs> you, yeah. you take this fabric known as baseball and you weave together these intricate like patterns this was beautifully done <laughs> thank you <laughs> and you know 
Sadar Ho, you know, he's on our own. You know, he's a good man if he gets referenced to the Beastie Boys rhyme. You know what I mean? Right. Got, was got it more Matt? hits than Sada Haro. Yeah, that's what it was. I was thinking because y'all said he got, they got mad hits like they were Rod Carew. I was mixing that's my That's it. Rhymes that's it. Yes. Um, October 11th, oh 1992, 30 years ago, after participating in a game uh, against the Dolphins in Miami, Florida, uh, NFL Falcons cornerback Deion Sanders. Neon Deion. Hey, Neon. You got to say Neon. Come on. Throw that flies to Pittsburgh hoping to be the first athlete to play in two professional leagues in, on the same day. Well, it did not happen oh. uh, as he would not be in the lineup uh, for the Braves' 7-1 to loss in Game 5 of the uh, NL Championship Series against the Pirates at Three River, River Stadium that evening. You want to so, know why they lost? Why is that? Because they didn't play prime time. <laughs> prime time. That was that's amazing that he, that he could even uh, make that even happen. That's yeah. Yes. Neon Dion. That's right. There's a yeah. third nickname. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's like Ace Cowboy Bob Orton. He has, uh, yes. uh, <laughs> he has a whole bunch of nicknames. <laughs> you know, and it, that's, I, I was going to say I have a lot of nicknames, but it's really the only one that matters is the Mr. Number One in the fantasy baseball ooh, league. Ooh, heat. That's the only one that matters. Heat. All right, Jarrett. Ah! <laughs> ooh. <laughs> ooh. I didn't think we'd have a buzzer tonight, but he just hit one, dude. I'm just saying, you're not count with it anymore. Oh, ooh, that, that hurt worse than the one, buzzer. You said one nickname. One nickname. <laughs> so, pick one. <laughs> yes. Wow. Uh, I like how he wears both chains at the same time. Ultimate flag. I yes. agree. Uh, you think he uh, has those chains on under everything in his jersey for the Falcons? He has course. to, right? He's got to have his gimmicks on. Yeah, <laughs> kayfabe it and hide it in, in the NFL uniforms. <laughs> Brother. Uh, good times. Uh, I actually saw uh, Deion Sanders play. Uh, this would have been 95. Uh, him and uh, he was playing for the Giants at that time. Uh, and, and it was Barry Bonds and left. And De, uh, Dion in, in center. This was at uh, Jack Murphy Stadium. Yeah. Was it, so, was it still uh, Jack Murphy Stadium then? It, it wasn't was. Qualcomm? It, it, it was. Uh, oh, you, you make a good I don't point. Remember, I, I don't know anything Qualcomm. I think it still might have been Jack Murphy at that time. It changed names one more time, and now, unfortunately, it's being demolished. Before, you know. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, so so my, with my limited baseball knowledge, mm -hmm. And yes, I've had I've got a lot of CTE, and I've drank <laughs> enough I've drank enough beer to kill a herd of elephants. So okay, I could be making this up. Sure. Didn't uh, Bo Jackson do a double gimmick? Didn't he play uh, so baseball so they, and football like in the same day? I I don't think I don't think day. not in the same day. That, that's the whole thing. It, it's. Um, uh, he, he had the opportunity to do it in the same day, which is uh, it's kind of unheard of because it, it would have had to be on a Sunday or, or Monday, depending on, on right. if they're playing Monday Night Football. But uh, no, it wouldn't have been it would have had it been a Sunday because it was a day game in football mm -hmm. and then a night game for baseball. Right. Huh. OK. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, so but, I did. I did make that up. dude. All no, right. no, no, I don't I don't know for sure, but I don't think he, I don't recall him doing that. I, no, I, I don't think I have has. a vivid memory of speaking about it with you guys. So I, I'll hashtag do the research and find out. There you go. There you go. Uh, October 11th, 2006. Oh God, now God. we talk about, we, uh, oh my uh God. yeah. Thurman Munson, uh, you know, obviously in 70, was it 79 or 80? Uh, I think it was 80. Okay. Was so 80. he, down in a plane crash this one's the uh one that a lot not a lot of people talk about uh, on a rainy midweek afternoon in Man manhattan Co uh, yankees pitcher Corey lytle and his flight instructor tyler stranger die as their four-seat plane crashes into an upper east side high-rise building uh supposedly he was like making like a u-turn and he just went straight into this building and um, this is the kind of the, the, the interesting part, uh, not interesting, but the kind of bizarre part about this. Um, Manny Acta, who is the Mets third base coach, is not sure if he'll be able to go home after tonight's scheduled game one of the NL championships series at Shea Stadium due to damage to the Bel Air condominiums caused by the crash. He actually lived in, in 
this building. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Holy jeez. What a that crazy is coincidence. Oh I remember God. I remember hearing that someone there was a baseball person wow. that lived there, but I forgot who it was. It was Manny Acta. Wow. Oh goodness. Yeah. So um let's get off. I, I hate doing tragic stories. Yeah, I was gonna say sure. my, keeping, uh, keeping it upbeat here yeah. the baseball brew crew. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna end on a tragic story. <laughs> um but 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 I am going to end on a death of something. Uh this time it's the Metrodome. October 11th, 2009, in the final game played at the Metrodome, the Yankees advanced to the American League Championship Series by defeating the hometown Twins 4-1, to a costly eighth-inning base-running blunder by Nick Punto ends Minnesota's hope of a comeback over a very talented New York team, including Alex Rodriguez. I like that. So they they included him in the very talented team. That's very nice of them. Uh, hey, hey, wait, wait. What'd you just call me? <laughs> what'd you just call me did you call me a oh what, what was that guys what was that what a P, i'm not saying the word p-u-t-o is watch is that what you just called me i heard you say that word nick punto was actually uh, hey, hey hey you said it right, again right. you have to you have to beat me oh punto, oh, punto. punto. sorry sorry <laughs> oof, oof. <laughs> um, yeah, Alex Rodriguez went five for 11 with two homers and six RBIs in that three game division sweep. Um, yeah, so I, I, you know, this is one of the stadiums that I always said that I would love to see because, and everybody said it was terrible and it wasn't a great experience. It looks amazing to me. I, I think well, it's so, it's so bizarre. It, it, I wish that I had got to see it once. Well, yeah, you can ask somebody cool. in the chat. Oh, that's right. Ian uh, went to the Metrodome. No, he's. Why don't you read what he wrote? Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, he played on that field. Yeah, oh, there my you God. go. <laughs> oh, that's no awesome. Way. Five <laughs> times. Five times. Um, did Did you hit well there, Ian? I, I'm. I, I definitely. Uh, I remember because the only time I played on because the Angels and it's, it's Diablo Stadium. So I actually played on that field when I was in uh, Mickey Mantle League, and I actually hit really well on it. And uh, it's like one of the only fields that I that uh, that I can claim. I go, oh, I, I would love to hit here all the time. Um, yeah. did, did you did you hit well there? Or did you pitch there? Well, I, I'm I'm fascinated as to uh, what it was for. So, did you have a professional wrestling match there, Ian? That'd be it. <laughs> <laughs> you wrestled King Kong Brody there, of course. <laughs> in a cage match <laughs> it says my contact fell out and i slid when it when i slid into third base and he found it oh wow that's pretty okay crazy. okay i i did have a contact fall out i don't think it happened to me during the match no in training once and i had to and i don't like find my contact i'm like i don't know what to do and i put my mouth to keep it to keep it like from drying out, kind <laughs> of what Ian did in that situation. That's amazing. <laughs> I, I I wish you hit one off the baggie that was uh, in yeah. right. Uh, that that was always a thing. Uh, hitting off the uh, the hefty bag in right. <laughs> yeah, that that lens had to be filthy then, Ian. If you just put it back in, jeez. Yes. Oh. Oh God. I'm, I'm just picturing all this dust particles. Dude, not eye. only dude, not only is Ian a beautiful man, but he's also rugged, dude. That is rugged. <laughs> oh, that is definitely rugged. Uh, by the way, can you call it by its proper name, Michael Mondragon? What is this place called? Uh, the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome. Thank you. <laughs> I don't even know if that was the right initial. I, I know the Triple H. The Triple H Dome. <laughs> the original Triple H. Yes. Is, um. Yeah, see, well, he washed it off the dugout. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to say, like, you, know you washed it. Come on, yeah. you were a legend here. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Brother, you gotta, we got to teach him. We got we to gotta coach him up on how to work, man. <laughs> like, yeah. my, had my eyeball popped out there. <laughs> Pop back in, brother. Get back Pop out there. Get right back in, brother. And then you have, bro- Jack, then you have like, uh, I'm sorry, uh, what, what, what na- what's your nickname? Mr. Mr. Number One. <laughs> Mr. Number One. I'm surprised he remembers he's Mr. Number One because you're going to end up like him with a lot of CTE. If that <laughs> so, uh, Kevin, uh, are, do oh, you want to do That's right. I forgot. This is my night. <laughs> well, it... my... I got my cards here. I'm ready. You, okay. So you got them? All right. So let me put you in, put you in the. Oh, uh... no. I'm front and center tonight. Oh, gosh. I'm like, <laughs> we're, we're already done. So, normally Wednesday nights, I do what's called Python Packs, where 
I do the opposite of Angelo. I find old cards just so we can just take a look at the photos, find some fun things on the front and the back, and just have a pint to enjoy it. I hope you have all of your pints out there. So this is from 1982 Fleer. 82. 82. That's why I saved this one specifically. I'm like, there's 28 cards so, nice. and two stickers. And hopefully, and gosh, these cards are, it's definitely a very 1982. So who are we looking for for 1982? Oh, gosh, I did the research, too. Uh, I want to say this is Gwyn or Sandberg was in this set. Let me take a look. Sandberg sure. might have been. I'm oh, sorry, this is 83. I'm sorry, this is 83. I'm sorry. Oh, right okay. It's yeah. 83. See, I'm there you easy. Go. Just like yeah, I was easy. Yeah, I knew he was lying. I I, I knew that 82. No, no yeah, Gwyn's, it's Gwyn's 83. It's probably going to be Boggs. I think he's 83. And Ryan Sandberg's 83. Let me see if there's anybody else here. Yeah, Boggs. I knew Boggs. There's another one, too. I, I want to say it was like, Rip, oh, well, Ripken's second year. So here's the thing, though. There's so many of these cards produced. You'd have to have a perfect shape card to be willing to send it into PSA and get it graded. Because yeah. the estimated price for like a PSA 10 Tony Gwynn would be $400. So, you know. What, George Brett? A George Brett card would be good, but his rookie card would have been 75 So yep. just give an idea of what these cards look like. <laughs> here we go. Take a look at, look at this guy right here. This is Dennis Leonard, Dennis who, who Cowboy Jack might know from being on Stranger Things. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> me <laughs> right now. So you just got to just appreciate just the look at the jerseys and just look at these old cards. Yeah. And something that's fun on the back here is like a little mug shot of him in the upper corner here. And a lot of stats. That guy pitched a lot of years. Wow. This is really good in like 80, 81. He was actually a 20 game winner three times. He won 20 yeah. games. We've talked about him before on the show. Yeah. In uh, 77, 78, and 1980, 20 wins. That's really impressive. Yep. All right. <laughs> a very casual looking guy here. There you go. Look at Mookie Wilson looking wow, all casual right look there. At that. There's that no Oscar awesome. the Grouch with him here, but still, that's pretty good here. I appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, and I have a did you know? I got a did you know? I was hoping to get some of these. Let's see if we get something fun here. Because sometimes it gives like, oh, he was signed by this scout. Or he had a home run in this game. Like, I don't care about that. I want off the field stats. Let's see <laughs> what we got here. Did you know he was nicknamed Mookie by his grandmother? His real <laughs> name is William Hayward Wilson. Oh, I like this. He was married at home plate before a game in Jackson, Mississippi, June 22nd, 1978. I like that. There you go. And he wow. was named the International League All-Star center fielder in 79 and 80. And he's probably, you know, he is, this is his fourth, he's, it's 82 would have been his third season. So still young and up and coming. Gosh, I don't know, I don't know what to make of this car. Look at Jeff Zahn here. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know what to make. I don't want to make of his facial expression. I don't know what's going on here. The sun's in his eyes. I'm guessing. Oh my gosh. He looks ready for his bar, bar mitzvah. Not, not his major league debut. You want to take a guess how old? Okay, this is a 1983 card. So he would have been 36 years old. No, oh, get out of here. Here. he's 35 he when this photo was Shut taken. The front door. He was 35 when this photo was taken. Look at yeah. look at the back of this card, how many seasons he played in minor. Are you oh kidding me? God. Oh my yeah. god! Did they keep him in a bubble? Like, if you take a closer look, I mean, he. It, 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 I know here he looks young, but if you look a little closer, you can see like you know ninth. Okay, there you go, George Brett, the ninth one. All right. Oh, here's the veteran. Here's the captain of the Angels <laughs> next to Reggie Jackson for oh, yeah. the show. This is like one of the most perennial Angels, like locally. This is Bobby Gritch here with that and beautiful Bob uh, mustache, beautiful stash. Bobby Ball. Seven Year Gritch. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very good. Wow. And uh, a local boy, he was uh, he lived he, li I, he lived in uh, Orange County by the time he grew up. Like one of my coworkers actually told me in South Virginia that he actually went to high school at Bobby Gritch. Oh, and wow. there's your little mugshot there. Look at all those years. A lot of years there for Bobby Gritch, with the Orioles and the Angels entirely here. Yeah. Second base, Gritch. Absolutely. Here is the the first player ever selected in Major League Baseball draft. Cowboy Jack Durango, where did Rick Monday go to college? Arizona State University. And who is his coach? The other guy from earlier in the show. Thank you very much. <laughs> Will, Will, Wilbur Tootsley? I don't <laughs> Close enough. Also, this man was known for, as a Cub, not a Dodger, for stopping a, a, a protester from setting a flag on fire in the outfield of Dodger Stadium. 
Yep. And he gets reward for that by becoming a Dodger. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what kind of stretch is going on here, but look at Larry Herndon here. Yes. <laughs> I'm, like, you, I'm like the bat, the arms at an interesting angle, the bat's there. Out of way stretching out for because that looks like it would be a warm-up jersey, not even his regular jersey, right? Oh, so yeah. I, I, I love that. I think that's – I love that. That yeah. old, old-timey G, uh, D – yeah, that's and he's fresh cool. with the Tigers too. He was with the Giants before that, I thought. Yeah, right, right, right. That. All right, let's see. <laughs> the last when think, stretch. When you that's... want to see what a major league ball player would look like in 1983, here he is right here. Greg Gross. Look at that. <laughs> that's right. I remember Greg Gross. I just look at I'm just laughing. Look at this. Would you think he's a player or a coach? I mean, honestly, you know? <laughs> and, and this uh, guy's an outfielder. I I think that that guy kind of looks like the uh the boy scout counselor that I'd be nervous to send my kids out with. You know what I mean? Like, or a priest. Can, can, yes, can you, Ke Kevin, can you name two actors with a last name gross? Well, Michael gross, Michael gross from family um, ties. ties. And also, uh, was it tremors? I think tremors. Okay. Oh, shoot. What's the other, what's the other gross here? Uh Oh, you're going to have to get me on this one. What do you got for me? Mary gross. Is that his she, wife? No, she was oh. from uh, Saturday Night Live. Um, okay. And uh, I think she's about. in a couple of movies too. That, that right. you would I, think really yeah. I was going to mention Kevin Gross, if you're going to talk about baseball. We have in the Gross. Yeah, that, exactly. Too. Exactly. Um, I, I do enjoy, I just enjoy just looking at these pictures here. Here's a very happy outfielder named Rick Miller <laughs> with the Boston Red Sox. Again, looks like someone just stole a jersey and a bat and just put it on. You know what I mean? Jeez. <laughs> And I and um, hang on, I think I had a did you know for Greg Gross here? Oh, he's named the Sporting News Rookie of the Year in 1974 for the Astros. But forget sure. that. Let's talk about this right here. I got a yeah. real fun fact for you, Michael Mondragon. Love it. Love this. All right, Rick Miller is married to Janet Fisk, the sister of Carlton Fisk. No, wow. Way. There you go. That's pretty fun. So, and and that's the thing too is that he was a Red Sox, and when Carlton Fisk on the Red Sox, that must have been how they met. So that's uh, pretty fun. yeah, yeah. Because he was with the Red Sox for in yeah, in like the mid seventies with the Angels for a couple of years, and now he's back with the Red Sox. There you go. Awesome. We have another Red Sox uh, future met. <laughs> Again, you're like this guy's a pitcher, Bob Ojeda. Yes. Pretty solid pitcher. It, yeah. Later on, more in the decade, I remember him here. He's still believe it or not, he's young into his career, even though he looks like let's see, born fifty seven. Oh wait a minute, wait a minute. I gotta find that Jeff Zond card. <laughs> Jeff, uh, uh, what did I say? How old did I say Jeff Zahn was? 36? Yeah, 36. All right, wow. that's right. I think so Bob, Bob Ojeda. How old do you think Bob Ojeda is? I'm sorry, I didn't get a better look at this card. He's probably like 25 there. Let's just <laughs> he would, you know what? He's 24 when this photo is taken. Uh, see, yeah. He looks old. Oh, it says like he was born in 57, December 57. This would have been taken during 82. So. And I, I think he was part <laughs> of, of the Red Sox meltdown in 86 against the Mets. I don't remember if he was on the Mets then or not. I was trying no, to no, 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 no. He 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 pitched for the uh, Red Sox when they I melted down. I thought he was down. on the Mets later, though, is what I was thinking. I, I oh, oh gotcha, got gotcha. As well. Yeah. All right, so let's see here. He was named – oh, did you know, Cowboy Jack? I'm sure you're not going to know any of this. <laughs> he was named – I mean, I, I won't know this – he was named the left-handed pitcher on the Baseball Digest All Rookie Team in 1981. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Well, I was going to say knowledge. 1982, but yeah, 81 <laughs> makes sense. You're right. Semantics. He was also voted the Sox Rookie of the Year by the Boston Writers in 1981. Ooh. And he was signed as a free agent out of College of the Sequoias, the junior college in 1978. I love they spelled Sequoias wrong. Uh, That's amazing. So they spelled Sequoias of a J, and it would be – I don't think that's right. I think oh, my God. A, yeah. It's pretty funny. Come on. Do the research. But you know what? It does make sense because he is born it, – it is, he lives in Visalia, California, and that's right – well, the Visalia Rawhide, by the way. But that's also where you would go to enter into the Sequoia Mountains in California. There you go. Putting over exactly. California. Much <laughs> like we did with our beers earlier. Yes, exactly. All right. A very um, – I don't know how to describe this man's look on his face, and not, I don't know what you call that with his teeth. I don't know if he's Richard Keel from that Bond movie, <laughs> but this is Harry Spillman. Yeah. Sure. Harry, Harry, Harry Spillman looks like he spent all last night drinking beer with Wade Boggs, and he's regretting it greatly now. <laughs> I'm and, sure and, there's but, many ball players he could have been doing that with. 
Nanny and, ball player. And, and this is how nerdy I am. I know exactly where that photo is taken. Stop it. It's Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia. There you go. Well done. Wow. I, almost should have, I almost should have tested you on some of these. Because for <laughs> sure, Jeff Zahn earlier, That's I know that for sure is Angel Stadium. I almost paused that as Angel Stadium. Okay. But he's okay. an angel. Let's see. Like this one, I would have no clue. I mean, where the heck is that? Yeah, at? I have no Where's idea where that is. All right, I'm sorry. I'm just kicking you off. I'm like, ah, we're only 47 minutes in. Like, would you have any idea with this? No, right? Would you? Uh, Wait, I mean, we can guess Detroit. It's a 50 50 chance, you know? Yeah. No, no. Because, well, look at his. Is it? Is that a, a road? Is that a home or? A, I don't know. It doesn't well, look, look like Look at his Detroit. pants. Are, are his pants white or are they? Are they they're, they're more like a gray. They're gray. That means they're on the road. So somewhere oh, there else. You go. Like and I don't know where Rick Miller is. I mean, no one. I don't even think Rick Miller knows where Rick Miller. It is. might. It might even be like spring training. Or yeah, something like that. some of these might be spring training. Rick Miller's in my heart, dude. <laughs> exactly. He's in all of our hearts. Yeah, after tonight, absolutely. Yeah, it looks like he's holding a tiny bag. Yeah, he really, really does look like he is. <laughs> all right, let's see here. Oh my goodness. All right, let's see here. I uh, I don't want to know if I want to know what's going on in this photo with pitcher Rick Waits. Yes. I've never even heard of this guy before. Rick Did Heaven you know, can wait. I was gonna <laughs> say there you go. I'll go say any relation to Tom Waits, but that's for only people <laughs> that one. That's for our music fans. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, you know what? That man was in many films too. All that's right. True. That's true. Uh Rick Waits pitched back to back no hitters in high school. More than any of us can say. I don't know about that pose and that. I don't How about this? I can do. continue the musical. Rick, wait, wait. I never had a chance to love you. <laughs> I was hoping you could throw a, if, if you could throw a missing you by John Wade at me. I, I, that's what I was keep that going here. I was trying to read the 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 writing here. There's writing, but it looks like that's probably a spring training place. Yeah, I don't know for sure yeah. here. All right. I like we have a Montreal Expo here. Oh god, these the quality of these photos are not the best. But here you go, Terry Francona. Oh wow. Future manager also. Yeah. But this would have been early in his career as a uh Let's see here. Oh, okay. I, I I don't know why. My did you know has nothing to do with Terry Francona. <laughs> yeah. So I'll just read it. Did you know Joe Sewell, Lloyd Wainer, and Nellie Fox were the three toughest strikeouts of all time? Sewell averaged one strikeout for 63 at bats. Wow. What we'll have to see if Tony Gwynn is better than that, because that's very possible. Terry because Francona, the, the current manager of the Guardians. There you go. Still, still in it. So I don't know how they're doing tonight, but still in it. Uh -oh. Kevin, I know that you're only working like 88 to 90 hours a week right yes, now. Yes, sir. But it, I think that we just have stumbled onto a new spinoff show for the Baseball Brew Crew. I want to see you on a first date with a girl once a week, and all you do is talk about baseball cards, dude. <laughs> no. It, and, and we'll, we'll – we'll, and, and actually, there's a timer, and it sees how long you can go without with, yep. without her leaving. Yes. <laughs> Listen, guys, we want more subscribers. This is the content that's going to drive yeah, subscribers. This is what we're all looking for. Kevin, I'm how much sure. do you love the show, pal? <laughs> so much so, let's take a look at this guy right here. This guy is my is, is oh. my inner animal right now. That's my expression when Calvin Jack gave me that John idea. John Lowenstein. John Lowenstein with the stash. <laughs> With him just looking like when oh, I yeah. walked in tonight. Right. He he looks like he, he came home early from work and his <laughs> wife was entertaining another gentleman. He just <laughs> tough breaks, John Lewinstein. <laughs> tough breaks, brother. Oh my gosh. He looks like Ron Jeremy's uh professional athlete brother. Yes. <laughs> and you know what's funny? I think him and Jeff Zahn are the same age. Really? Oh my god, it's <laughs> incredible. It's incredible. <laughs> All right, moving on here. We got another Baltimore Oil. It looks like it would have taken the same day, literally, like, they're probably right next to each other. There's Benny Ayala. Oh, yeah. On the air bar of the dugout right there, which I never even heard of Benny Ayala. I, he, geez, he had a lot of playing time, though. A lot of my early time, though. This is the fun and, uh, pack. 83 is, when they won, 83 is when the Orioles won the World Series. Yes, over the, uh, the Philadelphia Phillies, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. Thank you, Michael Mondrake, you for that. Ooh, we got stickers. <laughs> <laughs> our stickers what? are the Montreal Expo. Oh, that's badass. Woo! Yeah, those are actually pretty cool ones. And on the back, um, 
they randomly put a team's like team stats and why it's the Astros. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no consistency. <laughs> I know. I'm just, wait a minute. What? I don't know what's going on here. It doesn't make, I'm like reading this going, if this doesn't make sense, because of, oh, it's, it's even better. You know, it's even better. Michael Mondragon. Mm. It's the 1982 away statistics. Oh, of course. <laughs> so I'm like going, why do they only play 81 games? It's not a strike season. Like, away. We're, they're of getting course. their away stats. Yeah, you know, you know there's season. many times where I said to you, I go, I need to know the Astros away stats for 82. And uh, what I said, need, what where am I going to get those? Where am what I going to get those? But what <laughs> actually, you need to know? You texted me uh, yesterday looking for that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, perfect timing. Michael, what do you want to know their stat of? Oh, Lord. Um, stolen bases. <laughs> All right, they had 64 stolen bases. That's not bad for 81 games. That's yeah, not bad yeah. for 81 games. Cowboy Jack, did you need to know anything? Uh, <laughs> I'm just I'm just needing to know if Wade Boggs is in that card set, baby. I, no, I hope so. Good. That would be good. That that'd might be, be worth a penny or two. All right, well, oh, I, I, I don't know. I, I just laugh at these photos. Here's a great catcher for the Tigers. Not one of my favorites, personal favorites, just because he's on the Tigers. This is Lance Parrish. Very good catcher. This has been pretty yes. early in his career, too. Let's see here. His Oh, at this time, he was living in Irvine, California. Wow. Of course. Ugh. Of course. It would take I, him an hour to get home, too. From I, Irvine, I, too. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, okay, that was my life. <laughs> 50 minutes to get home tonight. Oh, Sorry, I need a drink. <laughs> Crate, cradle of civilization out there, baby. <laughs> All right. Did you know? That Lance Parrish led the club in home runs with 32 and was second in RBIs 87 in 1982. And he was an all-star in 1980 and 81. Wait a minute. You're telling me he did this in 82 and he didn't get to be an all-star then? Garbage. Yeah. yeah. He was the Tigers' first selection in the June 1974 draft. Of course. Okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> Here we go, Michael Bondragon. This one's for you. Look, look oh, at that. Dave LaPointe. Dave LaPointe. Just look at that. That's the most casual, like, wind-up. Yeah, like, it yeah. Like he wants to be doing anything else but pitching a ball right now. <laughs> yeah, because he he would like kind of like the crane, and he would like come up, and then he would like whip it in. He was uh, uh, eighty two. He was a big. Uh, he was for their uh, for the Cardinals World Series team. He was uh, in that rotation. In eighty two, he uh, was nine and three. Yeah, he he, well, he was originally a Brewer, and then uh, I, I don't know how he ended up over there, but he was eighty one with the Cardinals in eighty two. Yeah. Actually, I think if, I, if I'm, I, I don't know if this to be true, I think he might have been in the Raleigh Fingers deal. Oh, because Raleigh Fingers did go to the Cardinals, and I think he might have been part of that, but I, I, I can't say that for sure. Right. So, but did you know that uh, Dave LaPointe was named New York State Pitcher of the Year his senior year at Glen Falls High School? All right, everybody, give a ho! <laughs> 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 and he was an all-star defensive end football. That's how they literally wrote it, was yeah. all-star defensive end football. They can't yeah. say in football. Right. That's right. Jeez, professional <laughs> writers here. <laughs> he never had a losing season in the minor leagues, and he led the California League in strikeouts of 208 in 1979, and that was with the Stockton Ports. Let's give a shout-out to Angela Trinidadi out there. If he's hanging oh. out on the show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> from, from Stockton. <laughs> this might be my favorite picture so far. Look at Shane Raleigh. Oh, Going wow. for his model right there. He is yeah. a model. He looks like Dave, a little bit like Dave, Dave Rigetti. You know what? That might be Dave Rigetti for all we know. It, it might be it might be the wrong picture. <laughs> but that but that's just such a lovely photo. He looks yeah, so happy cool. here. I think that, that one that I think at Tiger Stadium. It looks like it looks like it might be a Tiger Stadium. Well, did you know? That he was a three-time MVP in baseball at William Horlick High School in Wisconsin. A Cowboy Jack knew that. Yes. Of course. Yes. In 1981, he allowed just one home run to Amos Otis May 26 in Seattle. Wow. That sounds like me writing this card. <laughs> uh, he won the uh, – Michael Bondragon? Yes. You were like this. He won the Mariners Roll Aids Relief Award in 1988-81. Wow. wow. How do you spell relief, Michael Bondragon? R O L A I D S. Good job. <laughs> oh. um, also, um, uh, famous Amos Otis. I love the, yeah. love his cookies. Yes, very good. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. That was about saying, sir. Who knows? I might still get famous Amos Otis in here. We still have a few cards left. That's true. Uh, 
I said that was my favorite photo. I might have a new favorite photo. This is Al oh, Cowens. Al wow. look, look at that look on his face. Dude. Exactly. Oh exactly. my god. <laughs> that is such a cool picture. That is fantastic. He's yeah, and so he has like those those uh wire uh wireframe glass like those yeah. glasses I, yeah, that man. were really popular in the 80s. It, it looks like Lionel Richie. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He was born in Los Angeles and his home is Cerritos, California. He was born 51. So this is a this is a hardy 31-year-old man right yeah. there. Woo, watch I, out for him on the streets. I love those uniforms. Those <laughs> also going for his like senior photo here is Carmelo <laughs> Castillo. Carmelo Castillo. Oh my god, yeah. look at this. Yeah. Check is out that... gla glamour yeah. shots, Carmelo Castillo. Dude. <laughs> yeah. I love it. He's so happy he can't even get his he can't even get his hat on with all that hair. <laughs> right. I mean, is that is that a wig? I mean, who knows? <laughs> no <laughs> no wonder seen, no know. wonder Mr. Burns hated long hair. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's why I would that's why the all right. Well, are. I got did you know? Let's see here. Did you know that Carmelo Castillo was the Dominican Republic League Rookie of the Year in 1981? I think Calvin Jack is clear. Of course. With a 339 yeah. average. He is, is 285 with 11 home runs and 58 RBIs for AA Chattanooga in 1981. Drafted off Philadelphia Class A Spartanburg Club in winter of 1978. See, that's why usually I'm like, eh, those are okay facts, but I'm going to read all the facts because why not? We're all, we're, uh oh, we're almost at an hour. I better hurry up. Huh? All right. Oh, we have future commentator. Not look. At, I don't know. This looks like a Monty Python character. By oh, John it does. Peter. Wow. I mean, that is this a real photo of Rick Sutcliffe? Wow. Future <laughs> Cub, future broadcaster. That is. That can't be him. It's that doesn't Rick even look like him. I don't know what's happening in this photo, but it's Rick <laughs> Sutcliffe. <laughs> that's no way. That's him. <laughs> Well, did you know that Rick Sutcliffe was 14 and 8 with a 296 ERA in 1982? <laughs> he was the NL Rookie of the Year by Baseball Writers of America and the Sporting News NL Rookie of the Year. And I'm sorry, NL Rookie Pitcher of the Year in 1979, 17 and 10. This man is he's, he's 26 in this photo taken. No way. <laughs> wow. my, my, my six. My did you know is that did you know that Rick Sutcliffe is not on that picture? <laughs> uh, that is crazy. Uh, I think this man liked your joke by his reaction. Here's Bill Madlock. Bill Madlock. He liked that joke right there. Wow, what's going on? Cowboy Jack, yes. what do you think he's looking at? Solid, wow. solid transition, by the way. So you <laughs> yeah, are well. a broadcast professional. <laughs> uh Bill, you know what, dude? I feel like Bill Maddox is watching two of his teammates give uh an umpire a wedgie. <laughs> That, that's go. Good that's, job. The, I, I that's like that. only the happiness that a blue wedgie can give you. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Bill, Bill, the Bill, Chicago Cubs, rookie of yep. the year in 74. A yep. very good, actually, a very good underrated player. Then he, he was with the Dodgers, no? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. At this point in career, he already had 1,400 hits. Wow. Yeah, I think he finished up. Yeah, he was actually really 000. good. Yeah, at least at this point in his career, uh, 316 lifetime batting average. That's really yeah. impressive. Yeah, he looks like Johnny Cueto. That's, that's, a, that's a <laughs> Yeah, there call. you go. Absolutely. All right, we have a catcher here. It looks like this is an angel stand. This is Tim Laudna. Tim Laudna. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. Let's That's see cool. here. Do, oh, <laughs> this is why I like these cards. Get ready. Maybe You know what? I'm going to save the, the best line for last. All right. He was professional baseballs and Southern League's top home run hitter in 1981 with 42 round trip first. But that's, but that's slanted. You know why, Michael Mondragon? Why is that? Because there was only half a season in Major League Baseball in 1981. Oh, my. Wow. But he was also the 81 MVP of the Southern League. But are you ready for this? Did you know he works as a probation officer in the offseason? Of course wow. I did. Of course I knew that. <laughs> He's the big boss man? Yeah, that's dude. right. Probation if you're officer. ever down in Cobb County, Georgia. Let me see where he's from. <laughs> Uh, it's doing hard. Time. He was born in Mason City, in, in Iowa, and his current, at least his home at this point, was Minneapolis. So he was working there for the Gondes, obviously. Nice. Get your beers ready, ladies and gentlemen. We finally have a brewer. This is outfielder Charlie Moore. Nice. Looking very happy to just be playing baseball, apparently. <laughs> and uh, did you know he was selected fourth in the June seventy first, June I'm sorry, June nineteen seventy one free agent draft? Okay. Ah, I'm getting all my angels here. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah. We, we, yeah that's a that's a great idea. Yes, exactly. sir. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to know how old this guy is. This is a pitcher named John Curtis, who I've never heard of in my life. 
He was born <laughs> in 1948, so he'd be 34 when this fuck. No, 34. 34. Wow, that's right. a hard 34, let me tell you. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I know you're gonna know this guy, but look at those. Those, those might be the best class we've seen yet. Tom Hume. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hume. Tom wow. Hume. Wonderful. <laughs> wow. I, a I man who looking. a man who knew how to rock some frames. Thomas <laughs> Hume. Thomas Hume. Wow. Uh, he led the club with 17 saves, and he was the co-winner of the Sporting News Fireman of the Year in 1980. All right. Lock I up got... your daughters, 1983. <laughs> Tom Hume is on the street. I'm at least glad I have one Hall of Famer in this pack, and here he comes from the Expos, Mr. Tim Rock Reigns. Nice. There we go. Nice. I got a Hall of Famer at least. That's that's nice. I got at least I got that out of this. And let's see here. Did you know he was voted the Minor League Player of the Year in 1980 by Sporting News and Baseball Bulletin? Where's your baseball bulletins, Michael Mond? I can be so happy. Uh, they're, they're at home. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> he led the AAA American Association, hitting with 354 average and stolen league stole league record 77 bases. 77 was the, was the record. That he was like, yeah, fireman of the year for sure. Yeah, oh, yeah Tom Hume. <laughs> yes, he yeah, he was yeah. I don't say what he was putting out. He was definitely putting out some fires <laughs> on off the field. Michael Bondragon, I have a very important question for you. All right, I want you to look at this card and tell me. What is missing from this picture? UL Washington. Shorts off UL Washington does not have his trademark toothpick in his mouth. Great job, wow. Michael Mondrag. And that's why you are <laughs> the professor, dude. Thank you. I can't say the golden god. Oh, no, you lost that nickname today, Cowboy Jack. I'm sorry, Jack. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. Did you know that UL Washington missed virtually the entire 1976 season after suffering a broken ankle in a collision with Tulsa first baseman Leon Lee. I, oh. I remember that one for sure. Wow. Uh, he was selected by Omaha fans as the Royals' most popular player in 1977. Yes. Those and, two and things go a long way. What 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 was Tulsa's um uh the name of their team in Tulsa? You're gonna make me say it, aren't you? You're gonna make me say <laughs> the drillers. All right, they're they're the, the drillers. drillers, yeah. Where's wow. the drillers? Tulsa drillers. drillers. Yes, sir. Because oh, because it's primarily Tulsa is primarily a dentist area. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. Oh, yes, sir. Yes. yes, sir. Lots of oil <laughs> derricks there. Yes. <laughs> and to close it out, my last card, and I don't know what's going on. In this card is the photo here. Uh catcher, I believe a future coach or manager, John Stearns. That's right. He Who eventually uh was a commissioner of the NBA, no. What? Is that somebody? Is that somebody, I don't know. I, I don't. <laughs> no. I David Stern. Is that David Stern. Uh. David, David Stern. No Stern. S, sir. Howard Stern. No, no, Stern. Wrong. I need the buzzer. Gak, where's your buzzer? <laughs> where's my, uh, you probably buzzer Michael Bondragon. Yeah, I think uh, he's like a he's like the third backup catcher for the Mets that year. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, it looks like he just threw the ball. It looks like he got punched in the face at the same time. Look at that cheek. I don't know what happened. <laughs> or maybe he's punching somebody back and someone just hit him. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on that right with that cheek there. Wow. Like a real uh, door. Yes. <laughs> so there we go. To finish this off, uh, <laughs> guess we want to take a guess on what John Stern's nickname is. Um, John, John, don't call me Howard Stern. <laughs> Very close. Cool. Oh, really? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no idea. No idea. His nickname is Dude. Oh, nice. He's the original dude. <laughs> nickname Dude. John Lebowski also set the all-time modern NL mark for catchers by stealing 25 bases in 1978. Thanks for hanging out. And I realized, oh, my gosh, I, I think this is our, we went pretty long. That's, that was That's fun. Right. That was, that we was... had a good time. That, was, that was definitely a lot of fun. And by the way, Jack, I wanted to say when when I, I had your uh, picture small, um, uh, you're with that hat that you're wearing. You look like Gabe Kapler. Uh, <laughs> it, it, oh. You look, <laughs> oh. and uh, I know we showed that picture of like yeah, how built he was. I, I it's I'm, I'm getting the, I'm getting Gabe Kapler vibes off you. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> you should. You saw. Do you, do you remember what he looks yes. like? You're the yes. Oh, too kind. Too kind. <laughs> yeah. 
There you go. There you go. But that was fun. Thanks. And we're going to do that. I'm not going to do it this week, but I'll be doing another uh, Pike Max hopefully next Wednesday. Be back on my No, Wednesday. that was that was a lot of fun. But that I thought that'd definitely... be a fun one. 80, 83 Fleer. I think that'd always, be fun. Always a fun romp when you do those, man. Just be yeah. your commentary. Dude, your Dustin Hoffman Rain Man-like commentary. When you raffle those cards off on Wednesdays, anybody out there, if you enjoyed that tonight, tune in every Wednesday, not tomorrow. But every Wednesday on our Instagram, Kevin does such a great job. Thank you. I appreciate that, Java Jack. Yeah, that was super fun. Um, that is a show for tonight. If you like what we're doing, uh, go over to our Patreon page uh, and uh, become a supporter. We totally appreciate it. Patreon.com forward slash beer baseball. Uh, here's we are on all the socials, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, and Jackie Martling's favorite, TikTok. Um, hey, it's funny. Uh, guys, any uh, last words before we sign off for this week? Uh, Saturday mornings, tune in on our main feed for Angelo Trinidad's uh, Rip and Review. It's a great time. He pulled an Otani last week. He's always got crazy stuff going on. So tune in then. Instagram on Sundays. Kevin and I will be doing Hazy History hopefully soon, but we just got to get out of our maybe. haze. <laughs> I think I, I, we really got to get out of our haze. I think I think it's that that what should I say it its name again? Is that the jinx? Fidel Castro? Is that the jinx? That, that I think that might, that might be the jinx. That might be the jinx. That's jinx. We're gonna shoot for Sunday. Um, we'll figure out what time. Yeah, I'll try. I'll shoot. For, I'll, I'll I'll let you know, Jack. Keep an eye on our social medias, and we'll let you know. Awesome. And Professor, how's Carvers and Creators going? Oh, there you go. It's uh, it's good. Uh, Thursday nights, uh, if you want to go over on YouTube, uh, Carvers and Creators, uh, we have a lot of fun over there. That's the, it's it's October, so it's a lot of pumpkin carving, and and uh, we have uh, we actually have Monique Hawk. She's been on the show before, but she was on uh, Halloween Wars. I think I'm not sure if she's still on Halloween Wars, but. Um, she's on it right now. Yeah. So a lot of, Oh, she's on they, the current season as a contestant she's on the current season. Of, oh, of wow. Halloween wow. Wars. And, uh, wow. Paul, our, our, our host is uh, a judge on outrageous pumpkin. That's, that's like in week two right, right now. So yeah, some big players. So over there. Yeah, Mike, Michael's rubbing elbows with all those celebrities and he still comes to us on Tuesday. Yeah. Night. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're a, for, you're not a just for us, a scholar, not just for us, but for the entire baseball brew crew brew universe. That's right. That's right. I, I come and slum it up over here and tell you about, <laughs> I, 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 and I, and, and I tell you about that. I know that a guy has a trademark toothpick. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. and the worst thing is I knew he was going to know exactly where I was going. <laughs> I love you guys. Instantly. Thank you. Thank you for another great night. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, hey, we'll see you all next Tuesday for another Baseball Brew Crew podcast. Thanks so much for joining, everyone. We'll see you. Good night.